is in Training Peaks. This is a feature that comes with all of our, our training plans and it's in your dashboard. You can set it up and the performance manager chart is um, it's a it, it's if you've ever heard of like speaking of blizzards you've heard a, a meteorologist talk about modeling mm -hmm. they're going to model out the jet stream model out the the weather and the goal is to forecast the weather to be able to tell you into the future what the weather is going to do yeah that is the goal of the performance manager chart is to model out your training to tell you in the future what your form is going to be like what your performance is going to be like and that's the big value of this chart that's why i love it so much is because we can plan out training and model out the athlete's performance in the future and then use that that chart to keep us keep us on track the performance manager chart is also a really good way of quantifying how much training you've been doing lately yeah you know, like I've said, how much you've been riding lately? Which is like this much. <laughs> so your Jackson CTL right now is going to be kind of low, which is fine. It's, it's February. My CTL, I can tell you guys, my CTL is 68 right now. I'm probably going to go up to between 105 and 110 two weeks before the crusher and the tusher, uh, mid, mid to late June. So that's my range. That's, uh, we're going from 68, let's call it 108. That's 40. Uh, I'm going up 40 um, in, the, in February, March, April, May, June. That's five months. 40 divided by five. That's, uh, God, is my math that bad? That's eight. That's a ramp rate of eight per month divided by four. That's really a ramp rate of two per week. Uh, we're super nerding here. Sorry, Jackson, you're going to lose me. <laughs> to the ramp, we're going to talk about ramp rate later on in, in the podcast, but that's all I need to do to peak uh, mid-July for the Crusher, two per week. Um, and then, so l let me just back up a little bit. The performance manager chart, train peaks, go to your dashboard, drag and drop, set it up. And um, if anyone has any questions about their uh, settings, um, we can... Uh, we can talk about that, but it's a 42 day rolling constant. When we were developing it, when we were calling it TSTWKT, uh, uh, Hunter Allen called it EWETS, E-W-T-S-S, -S, um, for exponentially weighted training stress score. Hmm. So your TSS your, that you generate from um, your riding, like when we do a two hour ride, you're gonna get a TSS of like 100, 125. That goes in and then it's exponentially weighted. Andy's got a crazy looking algorithm he created and um, it's a rolling 42 day average. So if you- CTL is. Your CTL, okay. your CTL is calculated from your TSS. Okay. All right. If Trying anyone, to keep up. <laughs> if, we're, if, we're, if we're losing anyone, um, yeah, just, just let us know. And everyone's saying my CTL is going down because You're not I'm not FT, FP and you know what I'm gonna do, guys? Because the yesterday counts as a rest day, I'm gonna go extra hard today and make extra TSS. Uh, that and, and for February, that means more TSS. Yeah. More. I'm sorry, more sweet spot. Mm. More sweet spot today as a result of yesterday's uh, snafu. And because I'm using the performance manager chart, it's flexible and it helps you stay on track. So, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and so CTL for the people that maybe don't know is chronic training load. Correct. And so, I mean, I know you're kind of getting into it, but maybe you can define it. Like, I mean, you say it's related to TSS, mm -hmm. but what is it really quantifying? I mean, obviously chronic training load, but what's a better way of explaining that? All the positive physiological adaptations. So chronic training load is all, when you train, when you increase your mitochondrial density, when you increase capillary density, when uh, you know your lactate buffering, your fat substrate utilization, that, that that's what this is is quantifying, and so it's all the good stuff. Now that that's it, that leads me into what ATL is, uh, acute training load. That's all the negative physiological adaptations. That's getting sore. That's uh, cortisol. Uh, that's getting fatigued. Uh, cranky, 
um, you know, immune suppression from training. Now the good news is, and this is how the model works, the physiologically the positive adaptations from training last longer than the negative adaptations from training. So you subtract the negative from the good and that helps you arrive at your TSB, training stress balance. Training stress balance is the balance between your CTL and your ATL. Mm. So half-lives. Uh, CTL has a half-life of 42 days. ATL has a half-life three to seven days. So in your performance manager chart, when you're choosing your time constants, and this is a, this is a very good point. If you're 22, choose a time constant of three, three days for your ATL. If you're a master's athlete, you want to think in terms of five or six or seven because it takes us longer to recover as you get older. So maybe a good rule of thumb, if you're 40 plus, choose five. If you're 50 plus, choose six. If you're 60 plus, choose seven as your ATL time constant in, in training piece. Okay. okay. So what that means is you need to be more patient with your training and give uh, more, um, more time to, to recover. And so if you're saying half-life, if you have a, a, a current CTL of 100, mm -hmm. 42 days later, if you don't do anything, it's going to drop to 50? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Another way to think when you're, when you're building, if your CTL right now is 50, and if you do any ride with a TSS over 50, your CTL is going to go up. If you have any day with a C, uh, TSS under 50, it's going to go down. So it goes up and it goes down. And, and the biggest thing you'll see is it goes down on a recovery day. It goes down on a recovery week. That's intentional. It, if you do TSS rides of 100 after 42 days, your CTL will be 100. So a lot of people go out and chase big TSSs on the weekends when they're really, well, that's what we'll get into, uh, striving to achieve maybe a peak CTL of in the 80s, hmm. right? So there's a lot of, you can model out everything mathematically and the, the, the beauty of planning your training ahead. I've already got all my training in Training Peaks. I've modeled out um, what my CTL is going to be by June, and that, that's where I come up with these numbers. I also have historical datas. Datas. Data. Datas. Datas. Uh, so I can tell you for the, from the last three years in a row, my CTL got up into the 100s. Uh, in 2016, it was 108. 2017, I got up to 99. And then last year I hit, uh, I think it was 110 after the, the oat, oat root that we talked about last week. Guys, that is all I could do. Uh, I had more time. I physically could not carry a higher training load. And to make fun of myself a little bit, um, I'm a coach. I set my own schedule. Um, I kind of do this for a living. And that was all I could do. Hmm. Um, if I, and trust me, I was all in for, for the crusher all three years. So when I mention this, because I don't think, and I'm 47, uh, so I don't think any athletes out there over 40 with a job, that's a, that's a big limiter. The, the limiter of how much TSS you can make on a daily basis, how high you can, your CTL can be, is really a limiter how much time you have and then um, your physical energy. Mm. And like I, I just literally, you know, I, you do a big week like the oat route, you have no, nothing, no, there's no other uh, option other than taking a rest week and it goes down. And I did that. It, it, it went up, it went down, and you just could never go, go higher. And so how does it work with a taper? Oh, good point. We'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so from a, with a taper, that the whole goal of building up a big base is so that when you rest, um, your body super compensates, and the uh, your TSB goes up. And so that's the end goal of the performance manager chart. That's what you're modeling out. You want TSBs. We could do a whole nother podcast on plus five, plus yeah. ten, plus twenty TSB. And, 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 but right now we're going to focus on CTL because it's a great way of 
quantifying your training load uh, here in the winter as you're building your base. And everyone out there should be building your base. Unless you live in California or Texas and y'all are racing soon, everyone should be on a sweet spot plan and um, building their base, raising your CTL. You should have a CTL goal. When you buy these plans, apply them to your, your training calendar and look at your performance manager chart where that plan is projected to take your, your CTL. And you wanna work backwards from your first A race and, and everything, kinda of like what I'm doing for the Crusher. So, uh, but yeah, that's a, if you don't build a big CTL, you have nothing to taper down from. So a lot of times athletes uh, have like just like a flat line of when you model out their, their previous training and then they take a rest week and they get slower and they're wondering why. But in order to taper, you have to do an overload, which is a big CTL build.